For years, people have been asking me to teach them how to edit video, asking what the best video editing software is, and asking if I have any videos to teach them how to edit. And I've always said no, because I don't wanna dive into the vast world of video editing. There's so much to learn and so much to teach, but there's only one of me. But today, that no turns into a yes, and I'm here to help you learn the basics of video editing, so you can take the next step in creating great video content. As I say about almost everything that I teach and help with when it comes to video content creation, this is simple. But notice that I didn't say easy. Nothing about video production is easy, but it can be ridiculously simple if you follow a proven production process. So what we're gonna talk about today is exactly how to begin your post-production or video editing process. Now in this video, we're going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro, an NLE, non-linear editor, that many video professionals use, including some Hollywood studios. But I need you to understand that any video editing program you use, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or even Avid, all offer the same basic tools, and they can be used by implementing these same processes I'm going to teach you today. It's just that maybe the menus and tools might be located in different places. Now for most people, when you first open up a professional video editor like Premiere Pro, it can feel a lot like climbing into the cockpit of a stealth bomber. It can definitely be overwhelming. Now I'm an old pro, so I'm going to share things with you that will save your butt so many times in the future you won't even be able to count. But you won't realize how important they are until you get down the road and experience that for yourself. So you're just gonna have to trust me. The first thing I'm going to share with you is the most important part of the post-production process, AKA video editing process, and that is having a professional folder structure in place for each and every video project you do every single one. Step one, folder structure. Before we even touch Premiere Pro, let's talk about folder structure. Trust me, an organized folder structure is what separates a smooth edit from a complete dumpster fire. Let's take a look at my folder structure that I've been using professionally for film and television, large corporate projects, government contracting, and of course my own video content, just like this video, for over 16 years and it's never failed me. And you know me, I would never tell you to do anything that I don't do myself. So feel free to download my folder structure for yourself using the link in the description below. Let's make sure to get those assets organized before you move on. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed in this first section of the video, I want part of this to be talking through how we do things, part to be sharing my screen and showing you how to do things literally, and then part to be me breaking down why the things that I'm sharing with you are so important. Setting up a folder structure and staying organized might seem tedious, and let's be real, sometimes it is, but it's the key to an efficient workflow. When you're in the middle of an edit and you're trying to find that one clip or audio track or graphic, having everything in its proper place saves time and frustration. It's all about building a solid foundation so you can stay focused on your creativity instead of getting lost in the clutter. Without a clear folder structure, projects can become chaotic and fast, and the process can quickly become quite frustrating. When your files are organized, everything else becomes easier, and it ultimately allows you to edit more quickly and stay more creative. Next up, importing footage. Now that everything's in place, let's bring our assets into Premiere Pro. You can place assets into your project individually and then organize them inside of your project panel. That's how most people do it. But if there's anything I've learned in 16 plus years of professional video editing, it's that there's almost always an easier way to do things. So here's my pro tip on how we're going to keep this simple. Instead of importing all your assets into Premiere Pro one at a time and making a mess of your project panel, let's drag and drop your already organized folder structure straight into Premiere Pro's project panel. And boom, everything's right where it belongs, right off the bat. Importing footage isn't just about getting your files into Premiere Pro. It's about maintaining the organization that we took all the time to build in the first place. Dragging in entire folders keeps the file pass intact and allows you to quickly find what you need as you edit. This process ensures that you're spending more time cutting and a lot less time searching for files. The familiarity with your folder structure will come in handy here as well because it's really just a mirror of that very folder structure. Plus, keeping this consistency helps when moving projects between computers or working with other professional editors in the future. Trust me, if you show up organized, other editors will be so happy to work with you and you will spend less money by not paying them to organize your mess. Number three, creating a sequence. Now one way to do this is to click on the new sequence button and then create settings for that sequence that match your camera settings and the clips that you just imported. Wait, wait, wait. 
Remember earlier when I said that there's almost always an easier way to do things? Well, before going any further, I'm jumping straight to the easiest way to create a brand new sequence for your video editing project so you can avoid any mistakes. All right, we're gonna go and click, hold, and drag our first video clip into the new sequence icon and let go. Just like that, Premiere will create a sequence for you that matches the clip settings exactly. No guessing or searching needed. This sequence, or as it's sometimes referred to timeline, is our work workspace. This is where all the editing magic happens. Creating a sequence that matches your clip settings is the easiest way to ensure your project stays consistent. When resolution and frame rate match, you avoid potential quality issues down the line. Keeping everything uniform from the start means your final video will look clean and professional without any extra work. It also saves you from potential headaches during your export, as mismatched settings can lead to unintended visual issues or quality degradation. Number four, adding audio. We're going to bring in our audio before we even start editing, so everything stays synced. Drag your audio file, whether it's your voiceover or some background music, right onto the timeline below your video clips. This sets the mood and makes sure everything flows smoothly. Adding audio early in your edit helps to set the rhythm and flow of your video. Whether it's background music or dialogue, having the audio in place helps you make more intentional cuts and edit decisions, ensuring the final piece is both visually and audibly engaging. It's all about building a cohesive story from the start. Number five, cutting, trimming, moving, deleting, stacking clips, and transitions. You know, the fun stuff. This is where we start to shape the story. First, cutting. Hit C to bring up the razor tool or click on the razor tool icon. Cut at the points where you know you need to trim the fat. Now switch to the selection tool or hit V and select and delete those unwanted bits. Done. Next, trimming. Grab the edge of any clip and drag to move the inner out point of the clip to tighten it up. It's just that simple. Cutting and trimming are at the core of editing. It's where you take a collection of clips and turn them into a coherent story. Moving clips allows you to reorder and create the best narrative flow, while stacking clips adds depth through things like B-roll and overlays. Transitions, like cross dissolves, add that finishing touch that keeps everything feeling smooth and professional. Understanding the basic functions of cutting and trimming gives you full control over pacing, allowing you to engage your audience effectively. By mastering these basics, you'll be able to refine your edit, highlight key moments, and ensure everything flows seamlessly. Each cut, each trim, and each transition should serve a purpose, not just be done to try and make your video cooler, ultimately adding value to your story. Number six, adding and animating text. Time to add a bit more context. Click on the text tool or hit T and click in the preview window. Type in something like my first edit. You can adjust the size, font, position, whatever you like, all in the properties panel. Now let's animate it. Make it slide in from the side. In the effects control panel, we're adding a keyframe for position. One for where it starts, and then we'll go ahead and move our words to where we want them to start from off screen and one for where it ends. We'll go a little bit down the timeline and move our words to where we want them to end and then play it back. Boom, the text moves smoothly onto the screen. A little bit of movement goes a long way in making your video feel super polished. Text and animations are powerful tools to emphasize key points or add personality to your video. Animating text helps catch the viewer's eye without overwhelming them, adding a dynamic element that keeps viewers engaged. The key, in my humble opinion, is subtlety. A simple movement can be far more effective than an over-the-top effect. Text animation should enhance the message rather than distract from it, and even small shifts can help maintain the viewer's focus where you want it. With thoughtful use of text and animation, you add a layer of professionalism that can help elevate your videos above those of others. Number seven, exporting the final video. All right. It's time to share our masterpiece. There are a ton of different ways to export, but we're going to focus on one of the simplest and most universal, and that's H.264. Now in your timeline, go to where you want your video to begin and hit I, and go to where you want it to end and hit O, and that will be your selection that we're going to render out. Go to File, Export, Media. Select Match Source Adaptive High Bitrate as your preset. This matches the quality of the clips that you started with. Then select H.264 as the format. This is perfect for most projects. It'll give you a high quality file that's easy to upload anywhere and is mostly universal. Now click export. And just like that, you've made your first video project. 
While there are many settings that you can use, H.264 ensures compatibility across platforms without sacrificing too much quality. Whether it's LinkedIn, X, Instagram, doesn't matter. If you're using H.264, it's going to work. Now that you know the basics of editing, watch these videos on how to write a great script, which will make your video editing easier, and how to increase retention so all of your video editing hard work actually gets seen by your audience.